really easy hand comes up first hand. Uh, we definitely have a more recreational player that limps under the gun, and we make it 5x. Really standard play, I think, from Neil. And also, by the way, this is definitely a good starting point for isolating limpers like this, but also don't be afraid to continue to increase the size based on their willingness to call. There's a lot of guys that when they limp in, they just absolutely are going to see a pot, abs um, whatever happens. So don't be afraid to make it 7, 8, even 10x, 12x, something like that, depending on their threshold. We make a, what I think is a pretty standard C bet. I think that his range is just incredibly wide here, and it's definitely going to be helpful for us to knock out at least some of it. Also knowing that there's going to be six outs where we feel really comfortable getting the money in against this player, and there's going to be another, let's see, I would say that we I would con sometimes continue on a 10, a jack, and an ace, so we have another 12 outs there that we at least can consider, consider, um, consider continuing on. I think the jack, while you definitely can make a bet, and a lot of times against a weaker player, I would make something like a three or four big blind bet here to encourage him to stay in. And if he took a really long time and then called or something like that, I could also potentially bring, bring in um, triple barrel scenario to that equation there. But I also don't mind just simply giving up here, which is what actually ends up happening. If you shift your focus to table number two, we end up three betting the big blind versus small blind. And it, becomes a really decent flop for us the issue becomes really is how good a flop is this for our opponent to continue on i actually think it's exceptionally poor for him to do so and when you combine the fact that i think his range is going to be even weaker in a small blind versus big blind scenario and it's going to have a lot of broadway um, hands here i think more often than not i would actually opt to check back here not only does that protect my checking back range when i have ace king or ace queen in a similar scenario but at the same time, I think that it allows him to, one, bluff off a lot of the time on the turn and river. And additionally, if he hit his hand, he might actually go with it, rather than if he hits his one pair, he's actually going to go with it. Throw in the fact that if he does have a hand like pocket nines or pocket eights, we're at least going to get two more straights from him. I think it's a really good spot just to be checking back a lot of the time here. I think I also, by the way, I would be checking back more against a regular who I'm going to be playing a lot with rather than just an unknown. We end up, uh, by the way, see betting and taking it down here on table two. Now on table one, we opt to just call in the small blind with pocket nines, which I think is a pretty standard play. And on this flop, if I was, if there's a more recreational player in the big blind, I would definitely like leading out here. And what that forces the cutoff to do is to play extremely straightforward against me. Also knowing that I am probably also knowing that I know the big blind is a weaker player, and therefore assuming that my range is going to be stronger than than normal so against the, if the scenario was a weak player in the big blind and playing against a regular in the cutoff i would definitely be donking here and if he raised me i would just be folding believing that either had um a heart draw which probably has is actually favored over me or has an overpair that has me really crushed instead what happens is we make a really interesting play here and we actually check raise to 3x and i definitely of all the scenarios i definitely like this one the least for a couple of reasons first of all i think it's a spot where very rarely are we going to be called by worse i think that if we check raise here good heart draws are just going to get the money in against us and i'm pretty sure we have to fold to a three bet although i'm not positive what is what his plan is going forward additionally i think there's going to be a lot of cards where he's going to be bluffing the turn when he misses and we're going to be completely losing that value i think this is definitely a case of trying to make it easier on yourself and at the same time, while we definitely like making poker as easy on us as possible at the same time, when we're definitely just going to be losing value in these scenarios, then it's certainly not worth it. And this is really what you need to avoid as poker players, because quite often what makes things easier is actually going to be the minus EV route. And I definitely think this is the case here, um, that we're just not going to be called by... If there's a lot, if we had pocket queens here or something like that, I could get on board with this a little bit more, even though I, that would be, not be a line that I would choose either. Um, finally, we have to consider that, logically, we were worried about his preflop range, but all of a sudden we're going to be check-raising. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because if we if we thought that pocket nines was purely the best hand, we would have just three bet a preflop. But now we're just doing this thing that makes it really easy on us, but when we're called, we're just completely dead. And I think that's just not maximizing this sort of hand here, so... Definitely a spot where I'd be check calling or donking, um, leading more towards check calling far more often. But this would be a distant third.
decision for me.